All right, everyone, it's time to analyze an interesting piece by Kurt Schlichter, actually. A link in the description, archived, of course, out of habit, largely. Uh, we've got to talk about the, the idea of these left-wing riots, why Trump's response, number one, is good. Like, people that are black-pilled on it, and they're like, what, Trump isn't doing anything, people are rioting, the left is staging an insurrection. No, they're not. And he points this out, and I think he's completely right, that what the left wants is an overreaction from Trump. They're trying to antagonize him. Right now, though, it's not working. Trump has looked at the situation, and, and you got to realize, think, think of the numbers involved. There are 330 million people, roughly, in the United States, give or take a few million. The number of people that have taken part in a protest, now this is just the cringy protests that, that at this point, they're, they're basically a referendum on anything the social justice cringe fringe doesn't like. The number of people protesting is only in the couple million range. A million people, maybe two, three million, and that's throughout the entire United States. It's less than 1% of the population. It is truly the fringe of the left. The fringe of that fringe, the number of people rioting, is an order of magnitude smaller than that. We're talking not even 100,000 people throughout the entire United States. Probably not even more than a couple of tens of thousands of people. Let's, let's put the number tentatively at 10 to 20,000. That's in the entire United States because you've got to understand, most of the people taking part in that violence, where you've got larger crowds, they're not even ideologically motivated. A lot of those people just want to loot. A lot of those people ultimately at the end of the day are just using tragedy as an excuse to get free shit. And then some of them are just randomly violent and frustrated about whatever in their life, and so they just want an opportunity to throw a rock at a cop car. They're not actually motivated by any larger organizational capability. The number of Antifa members is highest in, in Seattle, Portland, and a few of these other cities. The total is under a thousand people. That is that what's happening right now is not, as Schlichter would point out, not a kinetic uh, attempt, but an informational one. They want to project upon the nation the illusion that they are more numerous, well-organized, and dangerous than they really are. Really, at the end of the day, a lot of it's just random thuggery. There aren't that many deaths associated with these particular groups. Um, certainly not on a national scale. You get more violence on an average uh, Sunday night in Chicago. That being said, while, while there is a threat there, what people are seeing right now is, is a vastly different picture. By and large, they're seeing a bunch of looting, rioting thugs. They see thuggery and stupidity, and their ire is largely directed not at Trump, because he's not really involved, in, and the Constitution doesn't allow him to be centrally involved in, in many ways with what's going on, beyond securing D.C. with the National Guard and a few federal buildings and stuff, his response has been largely very restrained. The reason for that is that he knows that it's a trap. What they want him to do is send in the National Guard to crush a few skulls, and then they can call him a dangerous tyrant and a dictator wannabe, and all of that criticism that they've been setting up for years, and this is part of a larger campaign, certainly. There is central organization, and it goes beyond, like, Antifa and BLM. It goes to people, like, it goes to the sort of the old wave hippie left crowd that likes to do the subversion communism thing that are all now, they're rich and, and in powerful political positions. This involves members of the Democratic Party, I'm sure. If you were to do like a modern day McCarthyism, I'm sure they could find plenty of evidence that some of this is coordinated by standing Democratic people in Congress. Elon Omar comes to mind, among others. People like Michael Moore would have a hand in it. Um, I'm not making any allegation here. I'm just saying people like them in, in that particular class of, of business person slash political talking head, um, they like to be involved in this. They want to relive like the 70s and stuff back when they were building pipe bombs or something, uh, back in the Carter or Reagan administrations or whatever. The, the attempt, though, is to get the public to be demoralized and demand a hefty response. But the, the violence is already waning. And what people have ultimately seen is they've seen the far left burning their own cities and, and other people's cities, throwing their shit around, screaming about wanting to do away with the police. And it's funny because, and he points this out too, you've got the, the two groups, you've got the fringe left saying defund the police means to reduce their budgets, which is a terrible idea in many ways, other ways of reform, trust me. Now, and then the fringe of the fringe left is like, no, 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 defund the police means get rid of them entirely, disband them. And it's really funny because the, <laughs> the Democrats right now are walking this weird tightrope. And I pointed this out. People like Pelosi are having a real tough time because the fringe fringe left, 
that is very, very loud. This is the squeakiest wheel. The second squeakiest is like the sort of fringe left, like the, the Elon Omar, Rashida Tlaib crowd. And then you've got people that are further left than them because the Overton window got dragged so far to the left, like basically off a cliff like lemmings. In order to appease them, you have to keep giving them more and more and more. And they'll never, because of the nature of that kind of psychopathic individual, they'll never be actually uh, comfortable with the situation. They will always find something to bitch about. That's why utopia can't actually be created, because the true fringe fanatic utopian can never achieve their ideal, because they don't have a real ideal. They know that they want things to change, but they don't know what they want them to change into. And so they always overreach. They're trying to provoke Trump into a hefty response. The proper response is what he's doing, which is do nothing. Largely do nothing and just talk about it at rallies and on Twitter and say, look, the Democrats, this is what you get with them. Do you want to elect these morons? If you want to make a hefty response, you do it after the election. Then you send them in and you crush the rioters. If there are any left by then, which is, you know, remains to be seen. Do you think Chaz will be around in November? Once it starts getting a little bit more crisp, those tents aren't going to provide a lot of warmth. It's going to be drizzly and in the 40s, and they're going to miss their basement with their tendy vendor. They're going to be missing mommy and daddy's basement. They're going to be missing their fridge full of Soylent products. Or I should say daddy and daddy, or, or, or whatever arrangement they happen to be in. It's probably not a nuclear family in the t uh, standard sense. Uh, they're going to be missing home. Usually, you know, the place that their parents either bought for them or a chunk of their parents' apartment. Uh, that's where they want to be. It's going to be very funny because it'll, I mean, it's already falling apart. They're fucking shooting and stabbing each other now every night. And then they're whining that the paramedics didn't get involved. What, what do you think? The police can't show up. It takes them 30, 40 minutes because you idiots have clogged the roads. Because you idiots have over... Because, you know, there's other looting and shit going on in Seattle every night because the police are overstretched. And probably, and I, I, I would have uh, quit my job as a cop there and moved. Uh, I would have gone off to become a sheriff in some one-horse town out in the Midwest by now. I would have said, fuck this shit. If the mayor's not even going to have my back, I'm not going to have hers. Fuck the mayor. That's what they should be doing. They should have a mass walk-off. They should say, oh, well, we're taking it. Coronavirus is a threat, dog. We're just going to hashtag stay at home like you say. It's funny because I believe the Seattle mayor's background on Twitter literally says that. Hey, please stay at home. Stop the pandemic. Oh, but it's okay if thousands of people congregate in the streets in Chaz. That's all right. No, Schlichter's correct. Trump shouldn't respond at all. Look at the spectacle that they're making. I mean, look, look, look at the sort of online content creation sort of stuff. It's every, we're all laughing at these morons. Normal people, everyone's laughing. This includes liberals. Liberal individuals are laughing at these fucking morons, except the ones that have sold out recently. I'm not naming names. I think we can, find, we can think of a few so-called so rationally liberal individuals who have gone off a far left cliff because of the fucking Bernie shit. Uh, again, not naming names, but it's definitely happened. It's causing some uh, some stressful problems in their lives, I hear, at times. Uh, Kurt Schlichter's right. Yeah. And don't worry about it. I mean, again, keep in mind, this is a tiny minority of a tiny minority. The fringe left is a few million people in the U.S. Large movement, but it's not exactly lame stream. The fringe of the fringe left, you know, the Antifa types, it's a few tens of thousands of people. They can't even hold a city. Seattle, they probably got more members but between Antifa and BLM and all these groups. They can't scrape together more than a few thousand people, even a city like it's a fucking Seattle or Portland. Portland is basically like the worldwide headquarters of Antifa. They have trouble there organizing. Then they try to take over a block there and after a night it collapsed or something, like they failed at, at establishing another city state. And, and while their LARP is it's very funny and it's interesting to watch and it's sort of like a microcosm of the shit of the left, it's not going to last long. Get your laughs while you can, because it might not be there tomorrow. You know, the police might roll in at any time anyway. Get fed up with their idiot mayor and just say, fuck it, and fuck you. That's about all. Peace out.